as soon as Jackie Chan. So Jackie Chan has to come over to America to help out with this case. How is he going to team up with Chris Tucker? As soon as that man lands in America, Martin. Oh, the gong. <laughs> hit him with that gong. He's yeah. like, is that a goddamn gong somebody play? He said, just stop. Who did that shit? Who did that? <laughs> Show yourself. Back in the day, when, when, when they were doing it and nobody really thought of it, you know, they still would just do it once. And be done with it, man. That, yeah. that guy would play that gong, and he's like, "I'm out, guy. <laughs> I got my money. <laughs> be on his way." Hey, this guy came to play. <laughs> no, yo, this guy's working for that extra check, man. <laughs> he, 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 this fool followed Jackie Chan around the city with that gong, man. Uh, I'm policeman. I'm just showing him how to take a gun from a suspect. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah. Wait, stop. <laughs> I want to say a very happy 25th birthday to our old friend, to our old friend. Hadn't seen our old friend in years. Or should I say our old friends, man? Been a while since I seen old Jackie and Chris, man. It's been at least at least together in this film right here. Please tell me you speak English. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I don't want <laughs> you damn you American crazy. <laughs> you know, everything they said about y'all in China is right. <laughs> oh, people, that is Rush Hour. This movie was made back in 1998. So today is we're living in the year 2023 as of this recording right here. 25 years ago, this movie came out. I don't know if this if this is the, the exact day or the exact weekend it came out, but 25 years. You know, it's one of those movies that you look at and say, damn, I'm getting old. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, because we saw this in the theater. We sure did. Back in the day. And when we say back in the day, we're talking about, we're talking about the 90s. Now, it was the late 90s, 1998, mm. but that whole decade, some people say that was a whole decade of pure freedom. You were allowed to be as sexist and as racist as you and want homophobic. to. <laughs> homophobic. And back then, what's wrong with us today? Back then, it was funny. Yeah. Back then it was entertaining. <laughs> you know, to, today, you know, these kids just won't let us have no fun no more. <laughs> it was okay if you were doing all of it at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it, it and, just it just showed like, hey, I'm just <laughs> I'm just ribbing everybody. It's all fun. Yeah. And we had some people talented enough back then to put it all in one movie. They just took a whole big old <laughs> scoop of isms, yeah. sexism, <laughs> some, some, give me some obias over here, yeah. some homophobia, racism, and we just gonna put it in one nice, delicious, delicious, hilarious package, man. <laughs> they spread out over a bunch of packages. No, they no, they did, they did. But like I said, man, you know these kids today, they don't know how to have fun. I know. They look at this and say, "Y'all can't do that no more." <laughs> I don't know what's wrong what with you. What were you people thinking? <laughs> <laughs> we think it was hilarious. <laughs> no. Listen, it, it was just a different time. It was. It, and, and not to make light of uh, any of those things that we're talking about, you know, sexism and racism and homophobia, not, not to make light of that at all. Back then, you know, it just, you were just in the frame of mind that some things were accepted and that's just how it was. Well, it, there was also a frame of mind of like, this is funny, be, like, we know this is wrong. That's kind of what makes it funny. Yeah, exactly. Or... You're like, this is wrong, but ain't nobody gonna listen to my ass. So, hey, ha, 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 yeah. <laughs> I wanna be cool like everybody else. But, but uh, you know, with this movie right here, so we, we did this with another film not too long ago. We did it with Tropic Thunder. And the reason why we're talking about Tropic Thunder is because even though this is a very controversial movie, mm. it's still, for some reason, it's still funny and holds up. And a lot of people feel that way about Rush Hour. Rush Hour is still considered a classic. Rush Hour is, a lot of people say, man, that this movie is still hilarious today. So, I thought it'd be interesting to look at this as we did with the other film to see one, what has not aged so well over the years, if anything. Mm -hmm. And two, if there are things in this movie that have not aged well, then why does this movie continue to be considered a classic? Why does this movie considered to be so funny? Why do people still love this film? This is considered to be <clears throat> a classic film for one reason. That's because what well, nobody thought back in the day of teaming up Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. Right. Like, what the hell is this all about? Mm -hmm. I and mean, everybody thought when well, you brought <clears throat> Jackie Chan, and Jackie Chan had been coming, you know, uh, 
stunt master and martial artist Jackie Chan. Everybody thought, you know, when he would come over here, and he had been coming over here before. It's just none of his movies had really, his American films had not really uh, blown up. He wasn't really accepted in America. It seemed like it wasn't until Rumble in the Bronx, because yeah. that was a hit. And, yeah. and then, you know, I feel like the movies he did after that weren't maybe as, <clears throat> as, as good, but it was still in that vein. It was enough to make people stop and look at Steven Seagal and all the rest of the Americans and go like, Oh yeah, you guys suck. Oh yeah. Well, even with Rumble in the Bl Rumble in the Bronx, that was even considered to be not a huge success. Mm -hmm. uh, not the way they wanted it to be right, for Jackie right. Chan. They, they thought that that was going to be something that was going to bring Jackie Chan over and make him blow up, and he did not. And other films that came over, those went out with a whimper too. Uh, so this is the one where he came in, and they somebody had the idea of teaming him up with an American comedian, Chris Tucker, and seeing it. Well, if you do that and team up with somebody that the American public already likes, it might actually work to your advantage. And this is a movie where they team up as, uh, as, as two cops from two different countries. Chris Tucker being from America, of course, Jackie Chan being from China, and they're trying to help some diplomats of somebody's uh, uh, daughter's been daughter, kidnapped. Yeah, whose daughter has been kidnapped from uh, some Chinese criminals. You know, but that, none of that really matters. It's a, 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 a cop buddy film overall, you know, whether you like those things or not. So. Looking at this, I would like to start with uh, looking at this with a more critical eye today and seeing how this how this holds up or doesn't hold up in certain areas. And like many things in the 90s, Martin, you know, some things worked back then that probably would not work today. Mm -hmm. Now, when's the last time you watched this movie? Uh, last year. OK, so. Oh, there's, earlier the, this year, but there are some things in here, especially with the advances that Asians have made. You know, Asians have been raising hell yep. <laughs> these last couple mm -hmm. of years. You don't do that shit no more. I'm putting up with it. And but <laughs> so I look at this and I'm thinking, yeah, there's a lot of things in this movie that y'all would not like today. You let us just just like black people. You know, we let a lot of things slide for years <laughs> until enough was yeah. enough. And back then, I guess it was just not enough yet. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, they uh, offensive Asian tropes, uh, insults that that. That, 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 that stand out that would just not be accepted today. Uh, so with this movie, I tell you, let's just go ahead and jump into it. So immediately when this movie, when this movie starts out, they start playing that, that fake, wacky Hollywood Asian music. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it ain't authentic Asian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's enough for Americans to know that that's Asian right mm -hmm. there. You know, that's an Asian set on a keyboard. <laughs> Synthesized Asian Hollywood music, right, man. Right, right, But now, I, I don't even consider that to be bad. I don't think that that's so bad. You know, it's just. It's, I just want to go like, hey, China. Yeah, exactly. It's just, you know, I want people to immediately know what, mm -hmm. what's happening here. Uh, nothing says Asian, like fake ass Asian Hollywood music. Right, right. But I tell you what, so we, I, I, that's cool. Ain't nobody complaining about that, but it don't take them long to jump to that next trope. As soon as Jackie Chan, so Jackie Chan has to come over to America to help out with this case. How else he's going to team up with Chris Tucker? As soon as that man lands in America, Martin. Oh, the gong. <laughs> hit him with that gong. He's yeah. like, is that a goddamn gong somebody played? He said, he just stop. Who did that shit? <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> Show yourself. <laughs> and he hasn't even, man, he hasn't even touched the ground yet. He's, he's just off the plane. His he, feet he, didn't even he, touch the earth. He can still turn around and get back on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going home. They're with that little girl. <laughs> Some kids. <laughs> Hit me with that gong. And usually in these movies, look, they even uh, back in the day when, 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 when they were doing it and, no, and nobody really thought of it, you know, they still would just do it once. And be done with it, man. That, yeah. that guy would play that gong, and he's like, "I'm out, guy. <laughs> I got my money. <laughs> be on his way." Hey, this guy came to play. <laughs> no, yo, this guy's working for that extra check, man. <laughs> he, 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 this fool followed Jackie Chan around the city with that gong, man. Uh, I'm policeman. I'm just showing him how to take a gun from a suspect. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, he Stop. <laughs> and he, he hit it extra hard. Did you? Bang. <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm policeman. I'm just showing him how to take a gun from a suspect. 
<laughs> yeah, that's 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 what he uses for rim shots. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 I got this. <laughs> yeah, boom, do, boing. That shit, man. Every, every it, it had reverb. It took like about a minute for it to uh, stop. You know, that's something that we would not do today. Sure. You know, that's. I'm not even mad at it right here. Right here. I'm just saying, you know. That, well, that, it seems more like for comic effect there. So you can almost go like, well, mm-hmm. all right. Well, I mean, listen, you know, some of the humor here, like that right there, it should have just done it once and left it alone. Yeah. But, you know, but, but you know, the, the, the gong whenever Asian shows up, that's the most insulting trope that you can do to somebody. But speaking of insults, man, the humor, <laughs> there's a lot of humor here that's just cheap. You know, there's this cheap, stereotypical insults that they have at people, man. And a lot of them reference Chinese food. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because <laughs> uh, now some of it makes sense. You know, you you expect law enforcement in any branch to probably be just a little racist or a little oh, insensitive, a especially L.A., <laughs> especially in L.A. So even with the FBI, you know, it, it's no shock that they'll say something kind of racist when they're talking about an Asian person. This is an FBI operation and I don't need any help from the LAPD or some Chung King cop. OK, <laughs> you know, all right. I'm not surprised at okay. all. He might be from Chungking. But yeah. <laughs> he's talking about Chungking <laughs> rice or something. You, know? you don't know that. I know. I know. <laughs> Mark, he walks in, works in law enforcement and look at him. Oh, yeah, okay. Bald no, and white no, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Middle-aged, bald yeah, and white yeah. dude. He races his Yeah. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. calling Chris Tucker mm-hmm. right now. That's mine. You know, <laughs> fried chicken eating ass. <laughs> you know that. But uh, uh, we, you know, we... That's the FBI. Now, we definitely expect the LAPD to be racist. Yeah. Don't care what color you are. Right. And that's the case with, uh, you know, even if you're black. And that's the case, of course, with Chris Tucker right here. Because Chris Tucker just, he goes to the most obvious when he called his ass a bowl of rice. First, I get a bullshit assignment. Now, Mr. rice a <laughs> and Rice and is not even Asian. <laughs> he's like, look at he like, really? <laughs> that's from San Francisco. He like, that's all you got, rice? Yeah. Come on, man. They throw an egg roll in there or something. Well, <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, he's full of the, the insults, especially compared to the food. But he, he, we established early on that he's a buffoon. No, he no, he <laughs> is. No, he definitely so is. So him saying shit like that is like, yeah, it's funny. Not, not, not the insult's not funny. Your ignorance is funny. Oh, man, he, and he's ignorant as hell. <laughs> yeah. Because right after that, they don't get a minute down the road. Seriously, they don't get a minute before he makes a phone call to his chief and says this. I'm warning you, man. You better call the FBI. I'm going to drop his ass off at Panda Express. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Jack and Jack's like, all right, one more goddamn time. <laughs> Say something else. I done put up with this shit ever since I got here. Between you and that damn gong. So I'm not going to get the ass for it. So if you want to drive it, I'll beat you right now. Um, now, I would say this. That's the character. I get it. Because you're right. He's a buffoon. Yeah. So I, cause I, 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 I definitely understand that. But I will say that it gets to a point where it does not feel like the character anymore. It just feels like the movie just, it feels like the movie just around trying to get a laugh. <laughs> and let me just say this, full disclosure, all fairness, I did not like this back in the day, but I laughed my ass off. This line right here. I know which one it is. You know which one it is. I know which one it is, because you commented on it at the time. And I don't know if it's, it's his delivery or that it comes out of nowhere or that the camera stops so he can say it. <laughs> <laughs> but man, I said, this is not right, but I laugh my ass off at this line. Yeah, I've been looking for your sweet and sour chicken ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> chicken ass? Yeah. This is delivery. Yeah, yeah. And the way he just creeps in saying yeah. it. Yeah, because by that point, it seemed like he had kind of stopped with yeah. those. <laughs> it looked like they, he had made friends with Jackie Chan, uh-huh. and whose uh-huh. name is Lee in the movie, and they and they, they became they friends. And, yeah, yeah, and friends. He, he realized the error of his ways, you know? <laughs> and by the way, they both got two stereotypical ass names too, Lee and Carter. Yeah. <laughs> his name is what, like uh, Lee, I don't uh, know. Uh, oh, like, yeah, I forgot what Carter's first name Steve was. Steve Carter or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, now, because back then, like, even back then, I was a little uncomfortable with that line because I said, you know, that imagine that, that that happened to a black person. You know, what if Mel Gibson had run the room and said, freeze with your watermelon chicken ass? And then I realized, oh, that just be Mel Gibson. <laughs> you know, got to be, got to be, got to get a bad example. But, 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 no, he come in and say, freeze your pack. Of- 
Well, if he delivered the line right, <laughs> you know what? If he has, if he had Chris Tucker's delivery, <laughs> and when he was on that phone call, his delivery was great. Yeah. But uh, yeah, right here, you know, I that I laughed. Uh, we're going to leave it back where it is in 1998. And, sure. and I still left at this today, but definitely understand, like, even back then, I was like, damn, I don't feel right about laughing at this. That's yeah, I remember you were, you were disturbed by that. I was, I was, you know why I was disturbed? I was disturbed because I was laughing at it. <laughs> I'm like, no, I should know better about this, but I'm going to laugh anyway. I can't help it. Yeah, because it had nothing to do with what was going on. <laughs> that shit did not, man. It really did. That line came out of nowhere. Uh -huh. In fact, he I'm telling you, he improvised that. I, I believe he did. And look, I'm happy to say it too. Proud of it. Because uh, even Ken Loon, or fake Jun Tao as he is in the movie, probably stopped and went, what? Yeah, <laughs> what, what do you mean? So I'll shoot your ass right now for that. <laughs> and if they even have the. And I'm, I'm this. I might be racist for this because I'm gonna say that maybe I, these they have another group of Asians. I'm gonna say that they're probably Japanese because they're using an old Japanese stereotype with the gag right here. Get out of my way! Watch out! Watch out! <laughs> you know, everybody got a camera. Mm. Everybody, you know, somebody's saying Corey, they're Chinese, man. <laughs> Racism. I don't know. Because that was always the Japanese thing. They that, come that's up what with I'm the cameras saying. everywhere. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, that one's got a Japanese head. Yeah, I'm going to say Japanese. Okay. <laughs> Japanese got them long heads. I, God, I don't know. I, I only found that kind of thing insulting when it was in Godzilla. Because <laughs> it was like, come on. <laughs> I mean, it's a big ass lizard. Of course, you got to take a picture wait, of it. Wait, was, wasn't that in the, the second Jurassic Park movie? Did they oh, do that? no, they were running. They okay. take pictures. They just oh, they okay. were just running. Okay. okay. Yeah, that was yeah, the second Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah. That, that shit was that, that was uncalled for. Yeah. To quote Chris Tuck in this movie, that shit was childish. Yeah. Everybody's that Japanese stereotype today. That's true. Yeah, the Japanese are laughing. Ah, oh, see. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> now you are us. <laughs> can that. we put what you just did on the list? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> Bring in my ass. Oh, you are us. <laughs> That was from 1941. That right shit there. was, man. That was not right. That was not right. See, it's like I, I'm trying to talk about this movie. <laughs> yeah. and, um, stuff you can't do today, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was an example. You can't do what I just did today. Don't do that. Um, might even be some slight sexual harassment. I don't think this should bother anybody. Oh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. <laughs> they got Chris Tucker in the car talking to his partner. Now I talk about shit that came out of nowhere. Yeah. This man was trying to get information from his partner. Uh, what was the woman that played? She's dead now. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, uh, Elizabeth Pena. Yeah, Elizabeth Pena. He's trying to get some information from his partner, man. And this came out of nowhere. This was, this was so unnecessary. All right, one other thing. Yeah? What color panties you got on? I like she had sister enough to hung and hang up on him, yeah. man. And by the way, you know he's a damn pervert because she hung up on him and he's still smiling, uh -huh. still on the phone. Uh -huh. This has happened to him several times. <laughs> he does this shit to everybody. <laughs> uh, the, also, there's a point here. This, again, something that was improvised. Again, kind of maybe a little bit of sexual harassment going on because this, talk about uncalled for. Now, this is absolutely not necessary, especially at this moment. Come on, did it, did it, did it. Get them titties out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Get your titties out of here. <laughs> I'm sure that was improvised. That was completely improvised. Yeah. Titty, titty, titty. You trying to do like a bomb threat in the building. Uh -huh. You see, he's serious with the dudes. Everybody at the building. But you titty, titty, titty. Get your titties on out of here. Uh, what do you think? Could they do that today in a movie? I don't think so. Huh. <laughs> I, I doubt it. But, well, it's a question. Can they do it or would they do it? That, no, that's the thing. I think they could I do it. I think they could do it. With the but, right character and but whatnot. But I think they would more likely not do it. Mm. You know what? That that recent movie, No Hard Feelings, has me wondering. Because they did a lot of things you think, oh, they can't do that anymore. But they did it. I and think, it was funny. Yeah. I think they can do it. But I think you'd have to be a little more clever than this <laughs> right yeah, now. Yeah. And by the way, I laughed at this too, man. You know, I don't think I'm sitting up here looking down on I this movie. I think Chris Tucker was just funny. And, Chris, and yeah. it's, it's him being funny, like, this is like the height of him being this funny. It sure is, man. Chris Tucker was a whirlwind, man. Uh, and taking all that, you know, the sexism and, you know, and, and racist tropes out of it or racial tropes out of it at the t even at the time this movie came out. And I don't know how it is today, but even at the time this movie came out, uh, the cop buddy film was mostly played out. And, you know, Ooh, what, and, it, it, in the, in the well, the cop buddy film was usually a straight laced white guy and something different. <clears throat> yeah. 
So here you had two minorities as, as the, the, the buddy cops. But, you know, the thing is, in the movie, they were hitting all the tropes of that right there. For one, they had like, the, <laughs> you know, the, the cop who never should have been a cop yeah. because he does more damage than the criminals. Uh -huh. Like he spends half the movie just going around blowing up the city and putting mm -hmm. other, and putting ordinary citizens in danger. <laughs> like he knew. So, OK, by the way, people, that car didn't, didn't just explode out of nowhere. He, he didn't do it on accident. He knew that that car was full of C4. Uh -huh. He was trying to do a deal earlier, and he decided, I'm just going to blow up the car. <laughs> for, for no yeah, he does that, and then he does the Michael Jackson. He sure does. <laughs> Proud, proud right. to be a terrible cop. Right, no, no going, oh shit. <laughs> also, this is this is in that land where uh, cops, detectives, make them enough money to wear clothes and drive vehicles oh. they, could, they, would, they would most likely not be able to afford. The level of cop that he is, he ain't no goddamn detective, man. He ain't, <laughs> listen, he, he, he ain't Alonzo from uh, no. Training Day, no. all right? No, he's up here wearing a damn Matrix jacket uh, and shit. I, uh, I mean, it's before the Matrix, but uh, I, I I would assume that he's just in heavily in credit card debt. Oh yeah, <laughs> have you seen his car in the movie? He's got like a like a convertible, a yeah. European convertible. Yeah, man, it's yeah. Um, you know they have the they have the angry chief scene. Although I'll give them this, they took a spin on this right here. Mm. Their spin was the chief is not so angry. But did nobody die? You destroyed half a city block. That block was already messed up. And you lost a lot of evidence. We still got a little bit left. What? <laughs> Again, it's got to be fire, especially when he's talking about this situation. Uh, oh, and I also have this, the, you know, the, the trope of uh, oh, the, the, the police chief not black. Um, that is true. That yes, that is true. Yeah, you can see. What's that actor's name? Uh, Philip Baker Hall. Is he dead? He's dead now. Yeah, more, oh hell yeah, <laughs> been dead. They also have the trope of the, uh, the you know, the, in every cop buddy film they got to start out hating each other even oh, yeah. if one is a dog oh, yeah. they got to they got to start out hating each other and here they hate each other so much they just pulling guns out on each other in the middle of the street <laughs> just in the, in, the, in the middle of the day you just pulling guns out on each other mind your own business old man stay in the car hey i want to go with hey, you hey what's happening here you think i'm playing with you don't move he said, it's, even the cop, even the cab driver was like, this shit getting old. Right. Both of them this put is this stupid, shit down. But yeah, you both idiots, put your guns down. <laughs> Damn, dude, I can't tell if that's a real old dude or that's somebody in makeup. <laughs> I think it's a real old dude. Like some not goddamn Hogwarts or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real old dude. <laughs> uh, but that whole thing, that's that's always the, the thing with superheroes as well. They they meet up, there's a misunderstanding, they got to fight. They should do. And then they go like, oh, wait. Oh, you're a good guy too. Okay, yeah. Well, then let's work together. You're right about you that. You watched that first Avengers movie. It's all like, I hate you. I hate you. And like, oh wait, oh you cool. All right. Well, then let's let's all be on the same team. Well, they're being manipulated by the magic, <laughs> the dark magic of Loki. <laughs> so you know, we're going through all these these tropes, whether they be racial, you know, sexist, or you know, just uh, cliches of a genre. So why is this movie is still so watchable today, despite, you know, the potential of offensiveness of it or, you know, the whole thing just being played out, probably. Uh, man, the, the strength of this movie is clearly on these leads. Yeah. Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. You know, Chris Tucker, start with him, man. Chris Tucker is just, man, he is great at improvising. Mm -hmm. You know, sure, they, you know, they're, they're bickering at the beginning like they do of all these cop buddy films but our superhero movies like you say but man his comedy chris tucker's comedy has a realness to it man you, yeah you know he talked like black people that we know yes he does yes he does and he's full of energy almost like he has adhd <laughs> he's i mean seriously <laughs> you go from friday to money talks to this you know he's he, you know it's got like a, a quick babble but it's yeah. funny and yeah he does talk like black people we know and he's constantly saying something and it's always stuff coming out of his mouth is just making you laugh yeah i was just man the, I, this, I think one of the reasons why we love seeing Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker together. That's why they made two other movies. It's because, man, when they're together, they're funny. And you do. I can tell you, for every black person out there was watching this movie, he was talking to Jackie Chan like somebody's daddy, uncle, or cousin that they know mm -hmm. that is black in their family. Or a black friend that talked yeah. like this. No, 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 no. You put your own shit in the back. 
the hell you think this is? <laughs> hey, we had black mamas that talk I like know. that. That that mumbling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that always, you know, if you always had our, we hang out with our friends. We all had our friends tell us, if you hung out with black friends, that was, man, I'm going I'm to kick your ass you with me like that. Yeah, yeah. Chris Tucker was talking just like that in the movie. You full of shit. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> Don't nobody do that but me. Man, I, I loved him in this movie, man. man I, I'm so glad I watched this today. I was laughing through this whole thing. Oh, yeah. The beauty of Chris Tucker is, he can he can do that with Jackie Chan, a big star, but man, he did that with everybody in the movie, no matter how mm -hmm. no no matter how minor the character is. I love that scene where he got into it that old man at the at the oh. noodle stand. Oh, that old man's funny. <laughs> that dude, I don't know who that man was, but he he was man, he he uh he kept up with Chris Tucker with his yeah. shit talking. Yeah, he's like, yeah. tell his, yeah. your young I, ass. Ain't gonna, I, I know punk bitch. Yeah, your young ass ain't gonna talk shit to me. Not a, not a my damn food cart right here. Chinese food, no soul food here. I'm no punk bitch. I ain't no punk bitch. Me. I'm no punk I'm bitch. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I've seen interactions like that. I don't know who that old dude was, man, but that that was hilarious. Yeah, he nailed it. Yeah, and and Chris Tucker, man, he was doing that with all these characters mm -hmm. in the movie, man. No matter how small, and I mean, they just had, I mean, they just had scenes that they 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 must have. Uh, they must have uh, improvised those scenes, man, because they didn't they didn't really make any sense in the context of the film. Let me see if I can find this scene. You mean that scene where those two FBI agents got their ass whooped by Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker rolls up later and he says, I'm looking for somebody. And one of the FBI agents is kind of like, man, go screw yourself. <laughs> Say, man, y'all seen a little Asian dude about this height with a steering wheel on his arm? Go screw yourself. You take your little sensitive ass up there and let me in. Get out of here. <laughs> I, I don't know where that came from. I don't know where that guy just started talking to him like uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. But that was hilarious, <laughs> <It> man. Was. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's it seems like that. That even really... <laughs> Take your little sit to the <laughs> uh, You know, uh, uh, it seems like that, man, that uh, uh, that make me laugh so much that it, it raises the, it raises even those tropes up a level, man. Mm -hmm. Like that, that scene where he's talking to the police chief, mm -hmm. you know, that scene between them, it's it like if you watch that in the movie, the police chief is yelling. The guys can't, you know, the guys who messed up, the cops, they can't say anything. They get sent out the room. They go, now go, go do your goddamn job, you yeah. know. And but here, Chris Tucker and uh, and the police chief, man, they have an exchange that just even as silly as, and ridiculous as it is here, it just feels real natural, man. Mm -hmm. Like they are riffing off each other, mm -hmm. and uh, so you look at that and it's like, you know what, you 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 raise the level of even this generic trope of this uh, oh, genre yeah, right here. Yeah, for sure. A 10-year-old daughter of a Chinese diplomat was kidnapped this morning. Mm. FBI want me? That's right. Stop lying. I don't lie. Tell the truth. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> 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 you know, they, they, they work well together. They, they do. In well, that but, small part right there. But, but it's just funny, you know, when you know and you look back and like, oh, he's just tricking his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, he don't know that he's supposed to be babysitting. Like, man, I was like, oh, that was so bad what he did to him. Yeah, he deserved it. No, he, he deserved that more. Like you said, he deserved to be fired. He should have did. Even the, even the cop don't want no, I mean. The, I mean, because you see later when he's calling mad about it, how everybody in the station is laughing at his ass. Because you're like, oh, they can't stand him. Everybody hates him. And, yeah. I, and, and, you know and, what? And, they, and you would. If you work with that guy, if, if, if you worked in the office, he would be the funniest guy there. He'd make your day. But if you had to work directly with him, you would hate him. Captain, I don't think this is funny. Congratulations, Carter. Looks like you finally got yourself a partner. <laughs> <laughs> this character could have been very annoying mm -hmm. because apparently he is annoying in this world he exists in. Yeah. But Chris Tucker, man, his comic timing is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves that scene. I remember this, this is one of the scenes that sold the movie because uh, they gave the clips out to the press at the time. Because I remember we were viewing this movie and, uh, and this is one of the funniest scenes that they sent us. You mean that scene where he got just out of the blue, some some foot just hit him in his mouth. Oh yeah. Just out of no, the blue. No, 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 no. Me, we, we quote that all the time. Me and Billy quote that all the time. <laughs> yeah, who give me? You don't know who you messing with. I'm gonna knock that young. <laughs> <laughs> 
Which one of y'all kicked me? Man, it's like somebody <laughs> had a rubber leg yeah. and just swung it at his ass. You know, to be honest with you, uh, Chris Tucker reminds me of Billy. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, I see that. Chris Tucker is Billy <laughs> yeah. in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but his this man, Chris Tucker, he just had me laughing through this whole uh -huh. movie, man. I don't think I appreciated this movie that, back that then. Was much as for <laughs> yeah, that was he said that was, man, that was his childish. <laughs> Because he walked in the room, one of the dudes just punched him in the stomach. He's like, man, that's childish, man. Um, Jackie Chan in this, man. Uh, so, so one of the things where I, that, that makes this movie still hold up today to where we can ignore, you know, some of the, 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 the racial stereotypes and tropes that they have up in this film is that, you know, Jackie Chan is it opens with him being the hero. Yeah, because they put a lot of Chi uh, uh, Chinese people and Asian people in a favorable light mm -hmm. in this movie. And that is the thing. Like, why it doesn't come off racist is because the 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 Asian people are not put in a bad light. They're, yeah. they're not made to look bad. It, it's only the people who say stuff about them, who insult them, who look bad. And there are people like that. Yeah. And so the movie's kind of more natural than you think it is. Mm -hmm. You know, the, these people, you know, the movie's not afraid to just show these people just for being shitty people sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And <clears throat> it opens the movie opens up. With Jackie Chan being the hero, helps us overlook the offensive stuff, man. Uh, you know, they show him being a, a badass, doing all the uh, the stunts and fights that we love. <laughs> you know, the acrobatics uh -huh. that goes along with the stunts. Uh, but also, he's just charming here, man. Yes, he is. You know, Jack. I'll tell you something, Jackie Chan... He didn't want to do this movie, as I was saying at the you know at the beginning of the show. He didn't want to do this because he wasn't hitting in America like he thought he would, especially after stuff like Rumble in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things that he thought was hurting his success is his accent. He thought he couldn't get the the language down, and in these movies, people just got tired of hearing him talk. And in this movie. What they did was, and his manager even said, hey, do this. You know, I, I know you're self-conscious about your accent, but your broken English will work to your advantage here. Mm. And it did mm -hmm. because uh, he was from China. He had, he had an excuse to, yeah, to not know the, ang the, the, the language very well. But they played into it to the point where they just made him endearing. You know, they had, they had him sing certain songs where... You know, he was making an effort. He he seemed to genuinely enjoy that song. <laughs> to and love the song. He loved the song. So he wasn't an idiot. Mm -hmm. He seemed like somebody who really loved the music that he was trying to sing. <laughs> but he's terrible with it. <laughs> absolutely nothing. Sing again. Oh, absolutely nothing. by no war. Again, them getting along uh -huh. together so well, man. Um, and yeah, and that's when it comes together with that song. Yeah, no, it is. And by the way, another thing that worked his advantage was with his accent is that they wrote it so well to where his accent wasn't made to make a, a, a idiot of him. Mm -hmm. It was to make an idiot of other people. Because you know, when <clears throat> excuse me, they show people with accents, they're supposed to they're supposed to uh, mock them. Yeah. Here, it just exposed other people's stupidity. I'm Detective Carter. Do you speak any English? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? It is, you know, he does. If he doesn't understand English, it's not going. It's not going to help if you get slower and louder. Right, right. But that that Jackie Chan would just just stare at him the whole time. <laughs> yeah, and like because like yeah, I understand English. It's like no, I'm gonna just let you keep and going. just played him. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, played Every, him. Yeah, boy, everybody making him look dumb <laughs> in this movie. Also, that Jackie Chan action, man, that's in here. You know, that's uh, I, for, for an American movie. And do you know this? Because this is directed by Brett Ratner. Mm -hmm. who we don't hear that much from anymore today. <laughs> Shit. He, yeah, he, he dipped out before <laughs> Me Too took him out. <laughs> Smart Cause, move. Because it was, it was, they were just starting to go like, oh, and that Brett Ratner. Oh, where'd, where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> well, you better be glad he left. <laughs> <laughs> you better run. Uh, do you know if he directed the action scenes in here or if they had an action director? Or if Jackie Chan had a lot to do with that? Uh, I don't know. I would think 
the the latter that that you know other people were directing and yeah. it, and it's not the hardcore like anybody who's been a fan of Jackie Chan for a while would look at this and go like well that's just like baby steps for Jackie Chan but for American audiences who hadn't really seen it it was special yeah no it was this was the one that finally put his action into the mainstream because even with some of the other movies those were you know those were you know film people you know going to see those you mm -hmm. know uh, yeah people you know those are film buffs people follow chinese cinema him, mm -hmm. film hipsters mm -hmm. were watching this at the time this is the one where people said damn boy you see that movie with that little chinese man in mm -hmm. there he's badass and then the film hipsters would say oh well, i've been watching him for five years now <laughs> right right <laughs> oh you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> I mean, the thing about Jackie Chan's action, uh, one, that, you know, he based a lot of it on the, the silent film stars like Buster Keaton and Harold Lloyd. But also, uh, you know, he would take he would take some punches. He'd take some licks. Yeah. Man, which made it, you know, uh, felt all the more, if not realistic, like you got into it as opposed to the invincible hero who could just beat up everybody yeah. without getting the mark on him. Um, and Ferran said, here's something that might enlighten us a little bit. During walkthroughs, Jackie would recommend action slash stunts uh, based on locations and request props. So, of course, yeah, he had yeah. a lot to yeah. do with that. <clears throat> of course, no, I thought hey, that. that he, one thing you see about the man, he knows how to use his environment. Sure does. No, he's he's like great. If you put him versus the equalizer in a Home Depot, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know who would come out of that. <laughs> oh, that Home Depot wouldn't be there no more. <laughs> And I would say you talk about the two leads, man. It's mostly just the chemistry between those yeah. two. Yeah, you know, they're both very good, but they're, they're, they're both very good separately. But it's it increases exponentially once they come together. Sure does, man. And that's the thing, you know. Some of these movies feel like it's forced making these these when you know after the bickering is done, making them be friends. Mm -hmm. You know, here, I, I think Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker are friends, and I think they actually became friends on this movie. Yeah, during this movie, because <laughs> Jackie Chan he, he even said that he thought he was. He thought Chris Tucker was a bigger star than he actually is. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess they told him, like, man, you're going to get a, a famous black comedian. He was thinking he's going to get somebody like Eddie Murphy. He probably thought he was Eddie Murphy. <laughs> yeah, maybe. He probably told him a lot. He told him, yeah, he's Eddie Murphy. <laughs> oh, really? He looks skinnier than Percy. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but the, those scenes where they're, they're, you know, they're bonding, it actually feels like it's real. Mm -hmm. Do it again. <laughs> we gotta start walking out to every live show like that. <laughs> Play war. We do a show where where we do well we got LA coming there up. There got LA. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I can uh dress like Chris Tucker. You can be Jackie Chan. <laughs> Get your wig, <laughs> yellow face. <laughs> hey, you light enough to be Jackie Chan. <laughs> uh <clears throat> and so, you know, when you see them bonding like that, because at some point they got to work together and take down the criminals. So it just makes it feel like, you know, the pay when the payoff is there with them fighting is, you know, it's because they were getting along so well before. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> that clip was a lot quicker than I thought. <laughs> I was distracted at first. Uh, man, I laughed so much at, at, at this movie, man. The humor from these these like just these two amazingly talented people, mm -hmm. you know, it just transcends everything else in this movie. Yeah. Man, I was laughing so hard at this. I'm glad I watched this again. So, I will say this: we're about to, to wrap things up. Unless you want to add something, two things too. So think about that. You know. Okay. <clears throat> but I will say, you know, it's always interesting looking at these movies from decades ago and seeing how things have changed including attitudes, mm -hmm. seeing how attitudes have changed, you know, over the years. Yeah. Um, like the attitude towards weed. That's bad for you. I'm like, everybody's smoking weed now. This sure. is back in the day when everybody was, weed was still, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the devil's grass, yeah. the devil's plant. Oh, and that guy's funny, man. I don't know he who that funny. guy is. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, he look like a black droopy, don't he? <laughs> My weed. Just not my cigarette. This cigarette weed. Well, it looks like a cigarette. You better have glaucoma. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I don't know who that guy is, man, but he's funny. Funny. Uh, 
the devil's lettuce. Somebody said, yes. Yeah, you know, today, we, nobody gives a nobody shit about weed. Shit, but yeah. yeah, yeah. It's back then. It's funny how quickly things can change. <laughs> I got to ask you a question, though. Yes. If you did this today, would it bring the movie up to rare at all, you think? And I'm going to show you the, the gag that they did right here. Can you still? This is PG-13. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> can you still do this in a PG-13 movie? What's up, man? What did you just say? What's up, my? I don't know about a PG-13 movie, but you can't do that shit here. <laughs> of course, does that, does that get you an R now? I don't, that's why I was asking. I, I was wondering if you could still do that today in a PG-13 movie, because mm. everybody's so sensitive about that word now. I don't know. I feel well. I haven't seen it in a while. I mean, it's. I think it's a one of those where you can do it. Yeah. But does anybody do it? Exactly. I hear what you're saying. People are scared to do these things today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course, this yeah. guy got his ass whooped over. Yeah, but, but Chris Tucker said that before he died. Yeah, but well, Chris Tucker's black. <laughs> True. <laughs> Hell on out of here. Although, you, you got to admit that it, it, the movie does say like, hey, don't say that. No, it does. <laughs> it, it very clearly says, this is not a thing to do. We do not endorse yes. going around saying that. Well, don't say that, but also you see a little Asian man saying it, don't stop him. <laughs> yeah. So ass beef. <laughs> My nigga. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You no, I didn't really say it. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's, that, and I, I'm not saying you can't do these things. You probably can. It's just, can you, like, what I would say is you probably can't just be as loose with them as you were back then. Probably to be a little, a little more probably, clever. Probably, probably. But, you know, we've been following the characters. We we see the context of it. We we know that nothing malicious is being meant by yeah. it. Quite the opposite, in fact. Yeah. It's the the funniness. What, what the humor is in the misunderstanding. Uh, they, well, there you go, man. Uh, you can, I, I think I gave good enough reasons as to why. This movie still holds up today. But main reason is just funny as hell. Yeah, and yeah. it's not, and, it, and really we look at it, it's not that offensive. I mean, this, this is one of the things I see with movies, and I'm not saying that we should do this today, but there were characters who acted like people in the real world and they, and they showed their racism, their sexism, mm -hmm. and they were still considered to be, uh, you know, uh, protagonists in the film, mm -hmm. but they were just people who were just people, you know, because they, they reflected real people in a way, yeah. even though this movie does not reflect real life at all <laughs> to the point where they have the, 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 what you call it at the end, the, 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 boop, the blooper reels. Oh yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but still it, it may, it just, it, to me, it kind of added to it. Yeah. I don't know, you know, but, uh, this is, but overall the movie is just hilarious. Man. It is, it is. And Honestly, just even the story itself, I kind of like in how it plays on the relinquishing of Hong Kong back to China from the from the Brits. But yeah, the the movie is funny. Uh, the thing I would say is you and I watched this when it came out mm -hmm. in the 90s. We were already grown. We know how to process it. And you think about kids now, the Gen Z, how they are with things. How would they take it? <clears throat> but what I would tell you is the reason I saw it earlier this year or maybe last year is because... My kids were watching it. They love this movie. Mm. And they're Gen Z. Okay. And they think it's hilarious. I think a lot of, well, it's obviously working with a lot of generations because mm -hmm. it's still, you know, enjoyed by people today. Kids today still love it. Yeah. No, it's it's a funny movie, man. And just, just look at how uh, Chris Tucker, man, I don't know why he stopped doing so much, but he's, he's you know, Chris Tucker's hilarious. Mm hmm He's starting to come back in more things now. Yeah, yeah. Just and in that, that shoe movie. <laughs> that shoe movie. Yeah. <laughs> Air. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, he, he pops his head back up again. I mean, I guess, well, at least from what I remember, like, he made so much money off the Rush Hour movies that he just decided to retire and he got religious. He found went, religion. Went to Africa. And yeah. Some, yeah, yeah. Stuff. But then he would start popping up on cruises. Like well, he's his, doing doing stand-up on, on, stand on cruises. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see him uh, do stand-up, man. Yeah. I'd, Tell me what, what his next crew is going to be. <laughs> Shit, Chris Tucker on water. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, we have people in the chat talking about I was born in two, in the 2000s, and I love this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very, it has a very cross-generational appeal, man. It's a hilarious film. And yeah, I, I, if I was to give it a, a rating, I would give it full price just to how much I laughed at it, man. You know, the, uh, same here. You know, the, the, I think the sad thing is that, like, we question, could this be made today? Which, by question, it means that it probably won't be like it seems yeah. like we used like yeah. like something like this popping up was like oh yeah they made something like this and now if you got it you'd be like oh wow that's rare never see it like that.